Hey friends, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands On Learning. In today's video, I'm going to show you the math activities that I have prepared for my first graders for the month of January. Now, I usually do all of the activities in one video, so I'll show you my math activities and my literacy activities in one video, but I decided to break it up this time just to kind of um, make the videos a little bit shorter, and maybe then if you're only a math teacher and you're just interested in the math, you can come to this video. If you're just interested in the reading and the literacy and that's what your students are having trouble with, you can go to that video. So I figured I'd start maybe breaking it up and see if we like this a little bit better or not. Now, it has been a while since I have done a video and I just wanted to say here, thank you for coming back to my channel. It has been since I think before Thanksgiving that I posted a video on my channel and that is because we have just been in the midst of the holidays and um, we've hosted so many parties. We hosted three around Thanksgiving, we've hosted more than that around Christmas and now it is a new year and I'm just finally starting to recover really. Um, we had so much fun uh, just with family and friends and all of the things but now it is time to really just get back into business, right? And so um, this is my first video back and I just wanted to say hey and I hope you all are having had a great, um, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, all of the things and are excited for a new year of learning and growing and that is what I'm here to share with you. So if you are new to my channel and this happens to be your very first video of mine ever watching, thank you for coming along with me and just to let you know here on my channel you will see all sorts of fun learning activities. We do a lot of hands-on activities. Um, I also just talk about teaching and um, how, you know, ways to reach our students better and um, the fun things that we can do to make learning engaging for our young ones, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, etc. So by the way, I am a mom of eight sons. I'm a homeschool mom. I'm a former teacher, educator, all of those kind of things. Right now I've been busying myself actually in our church a lot. I've um, joined the women's teaching team at church so I'm going to start focusing a lot on um, things there. But I still will definitely be continuing with um, fun hands-on learning. Uh, I hope you will check out my website, funhandsonlearning.com, to see all of the activities that I have available. You can also always go to my Teachers Pay Teachers site to see the activities there. And uh, check out my playlists, watch more of my videos, subscribe, and um, let's go ahead and get into this video finally. Let's go. All right, friends, so I have laid out the hands-on learning math activities that I'm going to be doing with my first graders in the month of January. This is not the full lessons, and this is not, you know, obviously the workbook pages, things like that we do, but these are the hands-on activities. So let's get into the first one. All right, this first activity here is called Roll and Add Doubles. This is a new activity that I added um, to my website recently within the last month or two and I have never shown it on video before so this will be a new one for those of you who follow me a lot and um, I always for those of you who are new I always put my activities in Ziploc bags and I put um, the direction card on the Ziploc bag I attach it with I print it out on label paper and then I attach it so for this activity, you're going to need dice, or actually probably just one die. And then what I do with the mats, whenever I have an activity that uses you know, mats like this, I usually slide them into plastic sleeves. So that's what I'm going to do here for us today, is I'm gonna slide them into the plastic sleeves. That way I don't have to laminate them and waste a laminating sheet. I can just take them in and out of these plastic sleeves and I'm good to go. You can get these plastic sleeves off Amazon. I will leave a link in my description box to my Amazon affiliate store 
but you don't have to get them off Amazon. I have seen plastic sleeves like this at um, the dollar store. So that would be a good option as well. All right, so this activity comes with three different mats, I believe. There's one, two, three. So you just basically pick a mat. It also comes with the cards. Now, the skill that the students are working on, obviously, is adding doubles, okay? So two plus two, one plus one, those type of problems, adding their doubles, facts. And what they're going to do is they are going to choose a mat. So I chose my mat here, okay? All right, then you roll a die. So you have the students roll their die. Okay, what do I get? All right, I got a three. Now, the next step is to double the number and add it. So since I got a three, I would add three plus three. Then you wanna look in your cards and find the problem. The students can then see and find their problem so they know what they're doing. Then we're adding three plus three. They add that together and then they cover up their answer. So three plus three equals six. So I'm going to use these, these are snap cubes, and I'm gonna use these to cover up my answer. Now, if you have students who are still struggling with their addition, you can use something like these snap cubes to help them add it. So they would just take, you know, obviously three snap cubes, and they could just put it out, right? And then three more snap cubes, okay? and then I can add it up that way. Three plus three makes six and cover up my number. Now, I'm working with students who are able to add without doing that. And so I would just have them add it in their head and cover up their answer. But um, that is another option if you are working with struggling students. Okay, so then they would just continue on. I'm gonna roll it again. I got another three, so three plus three equals six. I don't see another six on my mat, so we're gonna roll again. All right, this time I rolled a five, so I'm going to find five plus five. Five plus five equals 10, and I'm going to cover up a 10. I'm gonna cover up this one. Now, um, you can see there's another 10 on my mat, so I would have to roll until I got another five plus five in order to cover that one up. What you want the students to do is continue to roll until they have covered up all their answers. They have once they cover up all their answers, they will have done all of the problems plus some of the problems twice, okay? So then um, once that mat is complete, if you still want them to practice some more, you could, oop, you could uh, have them do the next mat. And then there's another one as well. Or if you're working with, say, a small group of students, you could give them different mats. Uh, and that would be fun too. Or if you have students working in groups themselves, then they could have different mats and be playing um, different ones and then they could rotate however you wanted to do it. All right, so that is one of the activities that my students are going to be working on in January. Let's look at another one. Okay, this next activity is count and compare. This activity comes from my early learners math curriculum, the unit on comparing numbers. And we have done comparing numbers in the past, but um, I don't know if I've shown you this specific activity recently, but um, I don't think the students that I'm, I'm teaching right now have done this, so I decided to pull it out and use it. I know I've done it with some of my other kids before, but um, not these two students that I'm thinking of. All right, so anyways, let's get into it. What it is, is it comes with these different cards. Now, you can do this activity with a dry erase marker, or you can do it with numbers, like number magnets, or what I have here are uh, numbers from a puzzle, okay? They're actually from 
this, oh, you can't see it. <laughs> they're actually from this clock. So they, they're numbers that would actually go into this clock. But I use this clock, and I'm gonna show you another activity in this video where I use this clock and I don't need the puzzle pieces. Um, I just use it as a clock for the students to show me the time. And I'm gonna use them for this activity, but you could use just a dry erase marker and I'll show you that here. All right, so what the activity is, each of these cards has a picture on it and the students are going to have to, oh, you can see one of them has been written on. I'll show you that one. Oh, and here's another one. Okay, so let me take those out because they've already been written in. You take a card and then they count how many fish are on this side. So there are nine fish in this fishbowl and how many fish are in this fishbowl? There are eight. So you can use a dry erase marker and just write in the answers on either side. Then the last step that the students do is they can use their greater than, less than, and equal to signs to tell the sign here which number is greater are they less which number is less or are they equal okay so i'm obviously going to use my greater than sign nine is greater than eight now these signs they have little alligators on them can you see that okay and that is because when i teach my students greater than less than i always tell them that the alligator eats the bigger number, or the crocodile, you could call it crocodile, whatever. The crocodile eats the bigger number. Um, I've also used a shark before where the shark eats the bigger number, but either way, if their mouth is open towards the nine, that means he's eating the bigger number. So this sign actually in their head, the students are thinking, oh, that looks like a crocodile or an alligator, okay? And, I, and that alligator is a hungry alligator and he likes to eat. And so he always eats the bigger number. So if the bigger number was on this side, they would use this sign, right? Because you want their mouth open towards the bigger number. If the numbers are equal, like in this one here, then the mouth is closed. The alligator's mouth is closed. All right, so they don't eat either one if it's equal. So that is what I tell the students and it helps them remember which sign goes where. All right, so let's do this one now. How I think, I'm going to have my students do, instead of writing in their answer with the dry erase marker, I figured that they could use these numbers. So there are one, two, three, four, five fish on this side. So they could put a five, and then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10 on this side. They can use the 10, and then they're going to put their sign in there. So five is less than 10. Get the idea? So we're just practicing greater than, less than. So the pictures are um, fish tanks. There's um, balloons here. What else do we got? Oh yeah, and we have some piggy banks. So really, we're counting pennies or money, whatever you want to count here. So we have one, two, three, four. And then in this piggy bank, we have seven. All right, and then which one is greater? The seven is greater, so my alligator's going to eat the seven. So this problem would be, and I always make the students say what the problem is. They're going to tell me the entire equation or the entire problem. So they're going to say four is less than seven. All right, so they not only need to know how to put the equation together, but they also need to know how to read it. What does this sign mean? This sign means less than. So four is less than seven, all right? So there we go. And then they would just continue on doing more of these. If you're interested in this curriculum or just this unit on comparing numbers, there's other math um, activities that, have, that are in that curriculum that work on comparing numbers. Um, that curriculum also comes with like posters and things like that for you to, to help you teach. So again, it will be linked in the description box below. Any of the activities you see here are always linked below and um, most of them should also be at funhindsonlearning.com. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next activity. Okay, I figured we would go ahead and do telling time since I told you guys I was gonna talk to you about 
the clock that I have. So I pulled out a couple of winter themed activities because it is January. So I'm going to show you those. Um, most of the ones I pulled out are for literacy. So they will be in a different video coming up. But in this math video, I have two, I think, winter themed activities to show you. This is one of them. I have a whole bundle of activities for winter uh, math and literacy. Again, links will be below. All right, this one is called Telling Time Polar Bears. And maybe you've seen this in years past. I remember using this in years past. But basically, the children are going to match up the times. Now, what they do is they take a card. So I'm going to take this card. And they have to read the time. This says 3 o'clock. And then they're going to look through these cards and find 3 o'clock. Okay, this would be a good activity to also do in a pocket chart. Right now I'm just using this wooden box. I love using trays or boxes, things like that, that kind of keep the whole activity contained. Um, so, but I also do love using pocket charts. In fact, on the picture on the front of my um, bag here where I keep the activity, it shows it in a pocket chart. Okay, so... And then the last thing I would have them do is I make my students use a real clock or use a clock um, and then they have to show me three o'clock on the clock. So they would have to move the hands and show me three o'clock on their clock. Okay, so I always have a clock nearby when we do these activities. This activity is also, let's see, no, this activity is not from my Early Learners Math Curriculum, but I do have a unit on telling time in my Early Learners Math Curriculum, and um, if you're interested, check out below. All right, so that's basically what they do. They take another clock. Here I see 7.30, and then they'd have to match up 7.30. You get the idea. All right, so again, they can use this clock, and if they're having trouble figuring out what time this is, of course, go ahead and pull out your clock and have the students count the minutes, 5, 10, 15, and so on, till they see that, okay, when the minute hand is on the 6, that's 30. Can you see that? Okay, and so um, you can go over it with them if they're having trouble. And again, I like to have them do it, make the time on the clock because a lot of them, like if they were going to make 7.30, they would just point the little hand at the 7. Um, but I like to remind them that, well, wait a minute, it's halfway around the clock. It's 7.30, so it has to be halfway in between the 7 and the 8. And so um, actually having them physically do it on a clock helps a lot and adds to these type of activities where they have to match up the times. Okay, I'm gonna show you two more addition activities and I think I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. Now this is a very popular activity uh, that I think is one of the most popular math activities that I have ever created. So some of you probably already have this activity. I decided to pull it out for my students because they do love it so much and it is a fun one. It comes with this Touchpoint Edition mat. It comes with the Touchpoint Edition flip direction card. And then it comes with the Touchpoint math number cards. All right, so here is what you do. Follow the directions on the card. It says flip over two cards. So you want to mix up your cards. Flip them over. I have videos on my channel that teach you how to teach Touchpoint Edition. So if you are interested in Touchpoint Edition, be sure to check out videos on my channel. Definitely check out the Touchpoint videos that I have. But here's what you do for this one. So we are going to flip over two cards. So one, two. So here I have three and four. Now we are going to use these two cards to make our equation. So we are going to do three plus four. You can use a dry erase marker and the students could write three plus four in the boxes. Or since I have these um, cute little blocks here, we're going to use those. So we're going to do, oops, we're going to do three first plus four. All right. Now, in order to help the students learn to add the two numbers, we have our touch point dots here, and I won't go into too much detail on how to use them, but each of the numbers has 
uh, a touch point, a point that you can touch, and then the students can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three plus four equals seven. I go into more detail detail on this in a separate video, so check those out if you're interested. But what I'm going to do, instead of just having the students touch and count, I have some little polar bear erasers here because it is January, so I did take out our winter-themed manipulatives. And I'm going to have my students just put the bears in there as they count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, this touch point addition is a great way to teach addition formally at the beginning when students are just learning what addition is and how to do it. Um, I love to use touch point addition for that. Now, the students that I'm using this with are kind of past that, but they do love to um, place out the numbers when they add. Um, so I just think it will just be a lot of fun and it's still using their recall practice as they're counting. They know to start with three and then they can count four more. So they may not have to put the bears in the three. They could just put a three there and then count four, five, six, seven and know that the answer is seven. Okay, hopefully you were able to follow that. But what I'm saying is most of the students that I'm working with right now, they would already be able to say three and then they would just have to count on to the seven. So they just have to put the bears in the second number, if that makes sense. All right, let's try one more. All right, I'm gonna flip over two more cards. So this time I have five plus four, okay. So with five plus four, the students that I'm working with would already be able to know they're starting with five, so they're just gonna count on. Six, seven, eight, nine. So five plus four equals nine, and then of course they would have to make their equation here. Five plus four equals nine. All right, so there you have it. If you don't have number blocks like this, of course, you can always just write your answer here with a dry erase marker, five plus four equals nine, and so on, and then just erase it for the next time. All right, friends, the last activity I wanna show you in this video is hot cocoa edition. This is always a fun activity to take out in the month of January. I love this one. It's one of my favorites because it's just, I just, I love the season, right? I love doing seasonal activities. I shouldn't say I love the season. I don't love winter, but I do love doing seasonal activities with my students, something that brings us into the time of year. And so this is definitely one of those. So what the students do is they're gonna take a mug and they're going to add the numbers. I have one plus three. We're gonna use these wonderful little marshmallows that I have here. These are real marshmallows, so you wanna get yourself some real marshmallows for this activity. And basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna place one, and then they're gonna place three, and they're going to decide how much that equals to. One, two, three, four, so one plus three equals four. And the last step is to find their answer card. Um, these answer cards, when I made the activity years ago, I printed them out on this bright green paper. And I don't know why, because it kind of drives my eyes crazy. Uh, so I may want to go back and just print them out in color. Because I, I do offer the color version of these and just print them on a white paper someday. But since I already have them made, I just, you know. I'm just using them as is, guys. Uh, but what they do is they find the answer card and that's it, they match it up. So one plus three equals four. All right, so let's just show you one more. All right, let's do two plus five. So we've got two marshmallows on this side of the mug and we're gonna put five on this side. How much does that make? That makes seven and of course we're gonna find our number seven. All right, guys, well, I am just so thankful that you have come along with me on this video to see these activities. Be sure to check out um, my channel 
and see the new videos that are coming up. I'm going to show you the literacy activities that I have prepared for my first graders. I'm also going to do two preschool videos. I'm going to show you the math activities I have prepared for preschool and the literacy activities I have prepared for preschool. So, and this video really is, you know, kindergarten slash first grade because um, these activities can be also really used with kindergartners. So I might in the title of this video label it kindergarten and first grade. So yeah, so these activities, you know, they're versatile. You could use them. It just depends on where your kids are at. It doesn't really matter the grade they're in. It's just whatever they need. I mean, you could even be doing these activities with a preschooler if your preschooler is advanced, or you could be doing these activities with a second grader if they need more, you know, help. So it's just whatever your students need and where they're at. And hopefully my videos help you meet your students where they're at and give you some fun ways to uh, teach them the skills that you guys are practicing. All right, we will see you in the next video. I think I have run my mouth long enough. Happy learning, guys. Bye.